All right. Hey, good morning. Happy Friday. Happy non-farm payrolls. Happy non-farm payrolls live. Number 152 months in a row. Thank you to FX Street for hosting us once again. Love non-farm payrolls. So how many non-farm payrolls have you guys attended? Please let me know and uh, I'll go through the disclaimer. Let me remind you that the purpose of this presentation is education. This is not an alert service. I am not here to make trade recommendations. I will conduct technical and fundamental analysis and I'll do so in real time, pip by pip, candle by candle, with the overriding goal of helping you put together trade plans throughout this beautiful New York trading session. If you're trading along with me using a demo account, from tradersway.com, then regardless of whether your plans are successful or not, you will have an opportunity to learn. Trading and investing is risky and not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results, but please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Ni hao ma! Hey, nice to meet you. My name is Wayne. I'm the chief currency coach and chief market strategist for tradersway.com. Been trading currencies for a very long time. Uh, this is what almost 13 years I've been doing just this webinar. So uh, you'd you'd think I'd have at least 13, 13 years at least 13 years of experience. Uh, so more than 13 years of experience trading Forex. So that's really cool. And I'm here uh, to share everything that I've learned, good and bad, really, with the hopes of helping you become a success sooner than later. The way that you pay it back is you visit tradersway.com and open up uh, a trading account. You can choose from a fixed spread account, a variable spread account, an ECN trading account, it's your way, a trader's way with Trader Wayne. Whatever you want. Okay? But the thing is, it's a symbiotic relationship. So, you know, we look at these webinars that I do uh, with clients every day and with F FX Street every month is if we can help you become a success and then you become clients of Trader's Way, then you'll trade successfully for years and 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 years. That's really good for you because you're profitable, successful, and happy. And like I said, Trader's Way is a business. They're a brokerage firm, so they want you to keep trading and grow your trading account. Pretty amazing, right? What amazing uh, business model. Treat you with respect. Invest into you up front by offering these educational programs. And then execute your trades. Nice, right? Uh, yeah, well, I think yeah, I think you'll find the execution speed. Uh, it was several years ago, but I did uh, third-party tests, and the execution speed was faster at Trader's Way than most uh, brokers, especially the bigger ones. Uh, and uh, the, the fees are very, very competitive. It's a competitive world, but they're competitive. Customer service is great. You get... Me, but anyways, um, so this is trading on farm payrolls live 152. So we got a lot going on in the world, huh? Lots of interesting things going on. So what's on the, the mind of the markets? Oil a little bit. The 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 Trump, or I should say, the United States China trade negotiations. Sure. What else? There's a bigger story, I think. How about the spread between the 210? That's starting to concern me. Um, I think it was probably about June, the yield on the 10-year T-note uh, broke above three and stayed above three. I was really happy about that. It made a lot of sense to me. It was a good sign that things were positive as far as global macroeconomics. And just recently, we've uh, dropped 
the yield from like, I don't know, 2.1 or 3.1 to 2.8, 2.86 or something. So I don't like that. That's not a positive sign and we have to be careful for that. Now, what would create such a thing? I, I hope you don't mind, by the way, of me just going straight into uh, fundies. <laughs> Hang on, I, I can bring the chat in. Hang on, let me bring this chat in. Let me import the chat. Paste. Oh, great. It didn't paste. Um, I guess I can do this with copy. Paste. There you go. Okay. There we go. There's the chat. Um, I think it's the amazing thing where the Fed said, hey, we're thinking about maybe changing policy, eh? And so we can look at that. Um, we discussed this, uh, Traders Way clients and I discussed this maybe two weeks ago, so well before it became news. Um, let me go to, what do I want here? Template and blank. And uh, let me get a drawing tool out. Uh, where's my drawing tool? Let it rule. All right. Uh, I just need a pen. That's all. Pause. All right. Let me get my pen. Okay. So the Fed says, once they started raising interest rates, right, they said that they were going to normalize. Okay, they're gonna. They were gonna normalize interest rates because interest rates were set at an extraordinarily accommodative setting, which means they're low, 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 low. Well, low relative to what? Well, the historic norm, but also, uh, you know, inflation levels for a while there. Although for quite some time, inflation levels were close to zero and interest rates were close to zero. But you know, GDP picked up, inflation picked up. And the Fed was near zero. So, anyways, what they were, what they, what they did, I don't know how many years ago now, is they said, okay, we need to normalize. Now, step one for normal Fed policy is that at least get to neutral. Help me with neutral and and uh, EU and neutral new new new. Is that right? Is there an E in there? Anyways, let's just pretend there's an E in there. Uh, they need to get neutral. Well, what does neutral mean? In the English language, it means not positive, not negative. Is a, essentially zero, right? But neutral to what? Well, they call this the real interest rate. Okay? So what you have to do is you have to the real interest rate what, uh, what is real interest rate? Big I? The real interest rate is going to equal uh, little i, right? What do we, and, uh, and what is this? Inflation plus uh, the nominal rate. Okay. So in the United States, Right. In the United States, let's say, well, I guess you, what you could do is you can do it this way. The nominal rate plus or minus inflation, whatever. So if, yeah, let's do it that way. Let's do the minus. All right. So anyways, so if the Fed funds rate is two and a quarter, just make it up a number here. And the uh, real interest, uh, and uh, that's the nominal rate. And inflation is, we'll say, two and a half. Oops, I meant that, two and a half. Then we actually have a negative real interest rate of 0.25. Okay? Does that make sense? 
if the if the Fed funds rate is two and a half, uh, two and a quarter, but inflation measured, let's say by CPI or PCE, is two and a half, then uh, two and a quarter minus two and a half is negative a quarter, which all I'm trying to say is the real inflation rate is actually negative in this case. Okay, and when the Fed says they're trying to get to neutral. They're raising interest rates to the point where this is about zero. Or in this case, to, to fulfill this perfectly, would be exactly zero. Okay? So there's all this big debate in the media about how far, and I guess Wall Street, how far the Fed's going to raise interest rates and when are they going to slow down raising interest rates? And when are they going to stop raising interest rates? And all this, what's the glide plane of blah, 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 blah. And yet you could look at it and just say, well, when real interest rates are zero, then the Fed is going to either slow down or even probably stop. Another way of looking at it is, you know, People say, you know, the housing market is, is over, interest rates are too high, people can't afford mortgages. First of all, interest rates have never been this low, you know, in, 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 in forever. Um, but also, in, in real terms, inflation is, again, basically zero or close to zero relative to inflation. Okay, so we knew that a long time ago that we were getting really close to the, to the neutral zone. And if you went to the the Fed Watch tool, uh, I guess I should have planned this out. I should have planned this out. Hang on, Fed Watch tool. This is <clears throat> okay. Oops. And according to the Fed Watch tool, people are, after the recent speeches and announcements and reports and all these things that come up the Fed, they said, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, the Fed might be near um, the neutral zone. And the funny thing is you should be able to just basically calculate this on the back of a napkin or in your head, actually. What is, what is your, as an analyst, you'd say, what's your inflation measures at CPI? Is it core CPI? Is it PCE? Uh, I don't know, throw in GDP, I don't know, whatever. You have your measure of inflation, and then you know what the Fed funds rate is, and you put them together, and you should figure out if we're neutral. Now, typically, in a normal market, now, normal is not neutral. In a normal market, you'd expect, and, and by the way, you can just do your own research. It wouldn't be very hard. You can go out there and say, in a normal world, in a normal free market world, how much higher is the Fed funds rate than the interest rate? Because typically, the interest rate is going to be a little bit higher than the inflation rate. Because you don't want inflation to get out of control. You just want to keep it manageable. So you might find, let's say, let's say you come up and you're like, well, interest rates normally are about 1% to 1.5% above neutral. So you say, well, we're at neutral now. So therefore, there's going to be four somewhere between four and six rate hikes. And now you're done, right? So anyways, lots of things have changed. I want to point to this. This is the Fed Watch tool. And it's not hocus pocus. And it's one of the things I like about it. This is done through essentially money market traders. Okay. And this is smart money. This bank, this is banks trading with banks. 
They're very well-informed professionals, okay? Banks trading with banks. And they, they, they have their thumb on the market. Because not only are they trading, but they have clients and all this kind of stuff. So they really know what's going on. They are smart money, right? And they're taking this information in, but they're also negotiating deals with other banks. A bank says, hey, I'm a little short on liquidity to meet my uh, required depart, uh, deposits at the Fed, right, R, if you know your R plus E. Uh, anyways, the R, the required reserves, and they're required because of the required reserve requirement ratio set by the Fed. But anyways, these banks every single night have to have a certain amount of money, minimum certain amount of money parked at the Fed. And well, they might be locked up investments and stuff, so they might be a little short today. So they go to the Fed funds market and they just borrow from another bank. But all these banks are smart. They know what's going on. And they say, well, if I lend you money on the short run, what if the Fed raises interest rates over the time you're paying me back? Well, I'm going to have to account for that. And what happens is, let's say there's 25 banks and a whole bunch of them think the Fed's going to raise interest rates three more times, which was what they thought two weeks ago. And now a bunch of others are going to say, well, they're not going to raise three times. Some, are, some might think they only will raise two more times in 2019. And some might now say, well, I think the Fed is incredibly dovish now, so they're only going to raise one more time. And it's their idea. They're trying to calculate what the neutral zone is. Okay. But they're going to use this information to negotiate because money is money. And if they negotiate poorly and they lend somebody money and interest rates change, then they're leaving money on the table and it's not a good deal. So if they, if they, if the assumption, if they assume, if they've calculated that the Fed's going to raise interest rates, they have to account for this in their negotiations. And they say, well, you're going to have to pay me for that risk. Therefore, this is derived from bank-to-bank -bank negotiations on the cost of money in the short term. That's really interesting, right? So this, when you look at the, the, the FedWatch tool, it'll show you based on negotiations, not opinion. This isn't a survey. Um, how do you feel about the Fed? How do you, what do you feel the Fed's going to do next? Uh, it's none of that garbage. This is just straight up negotiations for money. Okay. And it tells you the light, what the, the, it, what they what the market thinks the interest rate's going to be in May. Isn't that neat? And what I was hoping to do, and I guess I, uh, oh, maybe here, uh, probably. Uh, so this 20 to 25, where's 20? Okay. So now it's on May 19th, we're thinking uh, two and a quarter to two and a half. 50% of the market is saying that. Okay, a couple of days ago, or was this yesterday? Yesterday, it was 48 and a half. Ooh. So some people in just in 24 hours have changed their mind and they're like, yeah, I think the interest rates are going to be here in May. A week ago, it was only 45% thought we'd be here. And check this out. A month ago, this was priced at only 32%. So in, le in four weeks, opinions have changed so much that this number, this, this two and a quarter to two and a half went from a third of everyone, less than a third of everyone to suddenly half of everyone. It's their opinions that are changing. Okay. So some people said, well, 
maybe they, sh if especially if they thought interest rates are going to be higher. I guess that's the other assumption. Is at some point, I think a lot of a lot of these people were on this this end of the game where they thought it'd be two and three quarters or three percent. I guess we could look at this. Um, yeah. So you can see half the market a month ago was here. What this is trying to tell you is one month ago, the market was pricing in May as a quarter percent higher in interest rates than they're calculating now. Somewhere in here, the market has, somewhere in the last month, the market has decided the Fed is going to slow down the rate that they're raising interest rates. Like, Chula, anything you want. Isn't that interesting, guys? Like, this is literally negotiations over money between a professional to professional. And what we've learned is they're pricing in less rate hikes. It's not an opinion piece. They're actually doing this right now, today, negotiating money. And based on the price of the negotiations that they're negotiating, there's less interest rates being priced in. So if interest rates are going to stay low and someone buys a 10-year T-note like uh, three weeks ago, the 10-year T-note was 3.1. Now it's 2.8. Some people said, you know what? I'm going to buy that 10-year. And they locked it in. They locked in a 3% interest rate knowing that they got at least six months to sit on that. Plus, these guys already might be bearish, so they're, they're going to say, oh, Europe is going to crash, China's going to crash, everybody's going to crash, it's the end of the world, and, uh, and they're locked into 3% interest rate on the 10 years, so they could actually sit on it for a while, and if things do get bad, that yield on the 10-year will fall. Well, what happens when the yield... What What's actually happening if the yield on the 10 years, so we go like 10 year yield, if it's moving this way, okay, and it goes from 3.1, 3.0, and somebody says, see, someone changes their opinion on this and says, oh man, the Fed's slowing down there, you know, I'm going to buy here. So they buy at 3.0, and then it goes 2.9. And then it goes 2.8. And we're somewhere in here now. I think it's like 2.86. I think it even touched 2.75 or got close to it. So what's actually happening to drive the yield down? This is yield percentage. What's happening? People are buying the 10-year. And the price is going up. And this yield is going down. So if someone bought it here, and then we get a lot of bad news. China and the United States are never going to talk again, and trade is collapsing, and um, Europe collapses, and you know, just the world freaks out. People will buy this 10-year T-note, and price will go up higher and higher. Well, if you bought it here, and the price goes up, and price goes up further, and the price goes up further, well, you've bought this asset and it's going up in price. Now, the yield is falling, right? Fall and down, down, down. Remember, the yield on this was like 1.7 at some point. So the price is good. Uh, the price has fallen quite a bit. So anyway, somebody bought around here, let's say. And if they're a doomsday person, they could sit on this a long time because they're assuming price will go up and they'll make money. That's why they do it. Plus, they're going to get the 3%. So that's what's on the mind of the market right now. Okay. So in the last month, right, the last month or two, let's say the last two months, opinions have changed a lot in the United States, according to that research, which is real negotiations. And that if the Fed is going to slow down the rate hikes, then we're pretty close to neutral. And they're not worried about inflation getting out of control, which is a really strange thing when the unemployment rate is 3.7.
So what could possibly have changed the Fed's opinion about inflation? Oil. Oil is oil. Oil is gasoline and jet fuel. It's also fertilizer, so it's in your food and clothing it, in the form of vinyl. Your rayon is really just PVC. Clothes. Makeup, oops, what else, medicine, what else, I mean just everything in your life, okay, so when the, when this goes down, it affects everything in the economy, which lowers prices and falling prices are deflationary. Does that make sense? It's such an important thing that many people look at core data which strips out food and prices uh, food and energy prices to get to either a CPI, or PCE. So at an, uh, in an economics class at Harvard, I, I had to do the math between uh, to showing the difference between CPI and, and PCE. <laughs> uh, yeah, crazy math. Uh, the big difference, you can look at it this way. There's, they're both baskets of goods and services. Okay, like uh, CPI would be things like the cost of an iPhone and the cost of uh, corn and the cost of a lawyer, that kind of stuff, right? A whole ba ba uh, basket, and I think it's like 5,000 of a thing. But it's stuff that you buy, and that's that. But what if your employer spends $20,000 a year on insurance, on your health insurance? And those costs are going up quickly. Should that be accounted for? If insurance goes up 12% a year, should that be accounted in should that be counted in inflation? It doesn't come out of your pocket. Your company pays for it. But should it be counted? Is that inflationary? We're, we'll get there. Just relax, brother. Okay, Elton, we have three hours, man. Relax. And, then, and of course, some people think it should be um, counted. And do you know who that is? The Fed. So that is personal consumption expenditures. And you probably recognize this letter from GDP. Anyways, so the difference between there's, uh, there's a couple of, uh, there's one other one, I guess I should add with PCE. The, another difference is the basket changes more often so what if what if corn doubles in price or let's change it let's say let's say apples are in the basket and apples double in price there's a horrible harvest and apples go up a hundred percent that's going to be recorded in cpi well what's the problem with that what do you do? Do you keep buying apples even though prices have doubled? No. 
And you say, no, I'm going to buy pears or I'll buy oranges or buy a watermelon. And you substitute. Well, PCE adjusts more uh, the basket more quickly. Okay. So it tries to capture that sub substitution effect. So it'll drop apples and it'll, it'll, it'll cover pears or something. Well, actually, uh, actually, it would do it here. PCE. So the Fed uses PCE, not CPI, because PCE is more uh, accurate. Yet everything you read about in the paper talks about CPI, except the people that manage interest rates don't look at CPI. Okay, so there's that. All right, so what does it all mean? It means if the number is really good, a big number, if, if NFP is 210 or higher, it says, you know what, Fed, you're still going to have to consider raising interest rates. And I think what will happen is people will price in one extra hike than they're doing now that we just saw. So remember how May was uh, basically two and a half, but people thought it was two and a quarter. Remember that? And then they moved it this way and they changed their opinion. They're like, no, nah, it's only going to be two and a half. Well, if this comes out hot, like 218, then people are going to say, you know what? I was right. It, it is 275. And they're, and they're changing their, their numbers back and forth, back and forth. But again, they should just look at PCE. Okay. But that's just, you know, they say if you want a PhD in, in Wall Street, you should get a PhD in psychology, not economics. Okay. But if it comes out 175 or less, let's do it this way. Less than 175. Well, yeah, I'll say, okay, for sure, 175. So if it comes out real low, like 150, people are going to say, yeah, definitely one and a half. Okay. And, it, and it's going to move things around. Adam, is that the uh, Challenger Christmas and Gray number? That's a lot. So uh, what's 800K? Did, that's a big number, bro. 800 or 80? Oh, I see. Uh, OPEC. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's good. So anyways, uh, so with this number is actually non-farm payrolls is more important today than it has been in a very long time. So yeah, so um, we are waiting for OPEC. So you should already know that. Uh, do you guys have a trade plan on this? Because Traders Way and Clients I, and I have had a plan on oil now for two weeks. And the plan is to buy it at, 50, what was it, 50.09, I thought it was, $50.09, about. And the target is here. 65 buy it at 50 drive it up to 65 okay we right and it's, we've been doing this for two weeks now um and so what we're waiting for or hoping hoping to get is a better way of saying it what we're hoping for is the opec deal and then boom okay what school did, uh harvard a little school called Harvard University. It's in a little town called Cambridge. That's a huge target. Yeah, it'll take a month. But yeah. Okay. But that's what this tells me. It's not my opinion. Okay. If you buy it here, the target is here. 
It's, okay. It's a monthly swing trade. That's all it is. So it's not me like just throwing out a big number. Yeah, buy it at 50 and drive it up to 65. It's actually 5009. And we had that number two weeks ago. So I'm not just making it up now. And it's actually 65. What is that? 90, 65, 85. It's very specific. So it's not my opinion. That's just swing trading. Okay. If it goes below this level, I'm not interested at all. Okay. So now we have a double bottom at, at support, right, after the higher high. So right now, if, if a good number is negotiated, I mean, 800 isn't a million, but it, it's certainly going to create a floor in oil. That would be the huge thing. Okay. Now, if oil goes from 50 to 60, it doesn't sound like much, $10 a barrel, but it, it's 20%. <laughs> a 20% increase in price in one month might be inflationary. Yeah, all of the trading uh, time frames are good, okay? And Thiago, the interesting thing apart, uh, of it is that whether, whether you're entering this trade for a month or six months or six hours, Okay, this is still the entry, right? So you say, so yeah, swings, but what about scalping, right? Well, the th interesting thing is these trades are entered as a scalp. Okay. Okay, you want to scalp into your swing trades. It, it to me... The fact that you want to be in it for six months is irrelevant to the entry. Okay. So now what you're looking at on this time frame, which is now only a five minute chart, you know that you wanted to buy it here. So this is very, very attractive to you. You know, you can see I've already had this marked that this is your first challenge of resistance. So if you didn't buy this dipsy do, then the next thing is to buy this sort of pullback, right? And try to get it long there. Now, this is the central pivot point for the week. Okay. And this is the M2, not only for the month, but also for the week. So this is a pretty decent trade, it, especially if you're playing the, uh, the OPEC meeting, okay? So you're, you're asking, what about scalping versus swinging? Well, to me, they end up being the same thing. The scalping is a tactical technique for getting into a trade as close to support or resistance as possible. But if I want to put in a long-term trade, I also want to get in as close to support or resistance as possible. Okay. All right, so let's mark up our charts, get ready for NFP. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking there's got to be something better to trade than this. This looks lousy to me. This looks lousy. So the more of the extreme side, the counter trend trades are going to be like from here. You know, what? I'm going to mark this one down here. Here and here. Okay. The smaller time, this the volatility play will probably do something like this. Or this. OK. 
Okay, does that make sense? Yes, yeah, so going back to Thiago, um, you're going to need to learn how to scalp at some point in your career. Scalping as your only technique, though, is just, it, it's not, it's not proper. Uh, you'll make money. If you're really good, you'll make money, but it's the hardest way to make money in Forex. Okay. And you'll, you'll never get wealthy. You might get rich but you're going to burn out and then you'll get poor. <clears throat> well, Frank, I just went through the whole fundamentals of it. So you should already know that I just finished that five minutes ago. I did like a 40 minute lecture on, on central banking policy. <clears throat> um, the, the pricing of the money market, the ma major key fundamentals that are in play. Um, so I already covered that, Frankie boy. When playing as support and resistance, is it better to use boxes or lines to find the exact level? Uh, I use zones. Okay. And of course, what I really use are pivots, right? So let's get out of here. Uh, I think this is probably not going to be the best one to trade. Uh, USD CAD might be interesting, as you can see. So what did I just explain to you on the euro? I said at this level, remember, this is the gray line under the big fat line. Let's just go back. Where was it? Oh, it was oil. Let's go back to oil. I said, look, it's not my opinion. It's just a swing trade. Let me back up on the four-hour chart. Okay, you see the big fat line? Okay, the big fat gray line here is the one below it. This is an M2. And I said, my opinion here is that it's going to go up to here, which is an M4. Okay, it's just, it's just a trade. It's just technical analysis. It's not even my opinion. I shouldn't have said opinion. Technical analysis tells me this is most likely in play at the moment. Cool. Okay, just sort of factual. <clears throat> Going to... Going to uh, USD CAD, look at this. It's exactly monthly M2, and it went up, and here's your M4. Actually, that's weekly M4. So wait, 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 wait. I might have misspoken here. So it's supposed to go there. So that only went to the R. So this tells me this is supposed to go here. But this is the projected top for this week. And you can see we hit that and stopped. We're at a resistance pivot point. And if this OPEC deal is signed and ratified, then things are going to change. Okay? But don't ignore where support is. So we got to keep our eye on that. Okay? If they don't come up with a deal today, I, I'm not sure if it was just announced a number or if they actually signed something. If they didn't sign anything and then people back out of it, we're going to go up to this level. But you can see I drew this um, on Wednesday. You see this arrow down? I drew that on Wednesday. It's Friday. And so you can see we might actually be on our way. And I think we're going to be challenged here. Okay. Okay. So by that, I'd say maybe take an early profit on the way down, okay? Remember, you're counter-trending at that point, so you, you shouldn't be as aggressive. Euro-Yen, this is my plan from Wednesday. What do you think? Cool, right? Would you like to plan trades with me every day for free? So like this is our trade plan from Wednesday. You can see we have this as a support area and then I have it long. And it's slowly taking shape. But of course I explain the logic and the reasoning behind all the trade plans because we do them together.
Okay. The way you do that, to trade with me every single morning for free, <clears throat> please visit tradersway.com. Open an account. A demo account is fine. It'll take you less than 30 seconds. Okay, go to tradersway.com. Open a demo account. Once your, your account is opened, in your back office, there's a button that says live webinars. And when you click on that, you'll be brought to my webinar. Okay? So please feel free to do that and uh, join the Trader's Way family. This is what we do every morning. It's uh, Monday through Fridays, 7.30 a.m. New York time. So what we're looking for here is, you know, some sort of confirmation. Okay? So this is Kiwi. So if NFP is good, macroeconomics are positive, I think the yen will weaken. Hey, Renee. Do I use commitment to traders report to get any bias? Yeah, from time to time. And now might actually be a decent time uh, to look at it. But, um, yeah, it's most important uh, in changes in the market. So there was a time, I'm trying to guess, I'm trying to guess, maybe three years ago, there was a time when the euro dollar was rising, like 800 pips maybe a thousand pip rally in the euro dollar, but I could prove to you that nobody was buying the euro. And I could do that through the commitment of traders report. So how, how could it be that nobody was buying the euro yet the euro dollar was up a thousand pips? But, uh, Chuli, Chuli, Chula, uh, it's instant. The commitment of traders report showed me that it was investors were uh, overexposed to the U.S. dollar. Essentially, they bought too many dollars and market conditions changed. So they were selling their dollar positions. That's all it was. When the euro dollar went up a thousand pips, but nobody bought euro. Now, someone without this information, someone not using commitment to traders report might be fooled and they say, oh, it's the euro, buy the euro, corner the market on euro, 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 euro. Uh, and they're wrong. That's where a commitment of traders report comes in. So also what it shows is when the dollar weakness play is done, that euro is going to stop going up like snap. Because they're not, no one's actually owning the euro. So if anyone wants to sell the euro, euro weakness comes right back. So let's get out of there. Let's look at gold. Gold's had a nice move lately, huh? We're stuck in what I had outlined as resistance earlier. So now it's just wait and see mode, right? You can see all these old trade plans. Right, but look at these dips up, up, 
up 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 down down by up 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 down down by up 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 down down by these are longer term swings so from here to here so all that was hit then it consolidated up 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 down down by up 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 down down by up 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 but okay I'm going to clear this out because I think we need to start over. Yeah, sure. You are turtles? Yeah. Seems reasonable. Uh, Roger says, wouldn't that uh, show up at rel not, not always. Okay. Because the move is sort of too big. And uh, okay, we're about five and a half minutes. I just keep looking at the clock over there. I use that one for some reason. Would anybody like my pivot points? My, th these are weekly and monthly overlapped. But I, I also have a whole bunch of profiles organized for you guys. And also, I have a whole bunch of templates for you. Would you like all my templates and all my indicators <clears throat> and all my profiles? Visit charts.fxbootcamp.com. I tested it yesterday. It works absolutely fine. Yes, I tested it, went through everything yesterday. It works. Yeah, that's been fixed, Rob. You're, you're talking about days ago, days and days ago. It's been fixed. So charts.fxbootcamp.com. La, 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 la. So get ready for here. Yeah, I think CAD could be interesting. Like I showed you, I, I already marked up and showed you the trade plans for Euro dollar. I think it's going to end up being quite mediocre. This is not a good setup to begin with. So I'm very blase about it. Uh, this USD CAD is really interesting, but there's so much going on with it today with OPEC. Um, is it believable? Is it pure? Or is it going to be chopped to death with geopolitical news? Not so sure, right? Oh, thank you, Emilio. Okay. And by the way, if someone goes to charts.fxbootcamp.com, downloads all the chart templates and stuff, will you confirm that it worked fine for you? Okay, just a few seconds now. We're going to get 9,000 different numbers in a, in a bit.
So tips, the tips, uh, is it, what is that, 7 or 1.7? Interesting. Yeah, that's not news yet, guys. This isn't news. So I think I'd rather watch this one. All right. Two people have downloaded and everything's fine. Good. Okay. Very dollar week. Buck fifty five. Isn't that interesting? So we marked it. I told you what to do. If it's less than 175, what is this saying? Let's just rehash and make sure you know what's going on. It's saying the Fed definitely can take a pause in raising interest rates. I just wanted to see, but it stayed 3.7. That's interesting. So this gives permission for the Fed to stop raising or slow down their rate of raising interest rates, which is a stock market rally, good for macroeconomics. Let's do it this way. Stock market's going to like it. Uh, the dollar should weaken because of the good news. Okay. We'll just go back here. Okay. So remember, do you remember how we had this marked? Let me draw it for you again. You said up, you said down, you said up. We sit down, we sit up. And then, what did we say? Okay. Our cat says the download work for him as well. So that's three people said the downloads work just fine. So again, if you want these pivot point templates and all the indicators and all the chart templates, and all the profiles, charts at fxbootcamp.com. Charts.fxbootcamp.com. Anyways, very nice. Okay, get ready for the pullback. Should happen any second now. Stop! Don't you dare. That's Obama's red line. And if it gets crossed, just ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. No, they'll continue to raise, but at the rate, um, so put it this way, I, what I showed before the news was the, the, you know, the banking system, the market, the market thought the Fed was going to raise at least three times next year. Now they're thinking only once next year. Okay. DWX doesn't like uh, MT4, huh? Oh, okay. Hmm. 
That makes it interesting, huh? No, thank you, Amelia. Jim downloaded work perfectly. Awesome. Right on, guys. Super happy. Yeah, I know, Jimmy. I found it, so I'm close. No, I have no idea what that is. Sorry, R cats. Oh, look at that red line. Hey, that's all right, DWX. You don't have to love MT4. What am I, an MT4 sales rep? You're not going to hurt my feelings. So how about that line in the sand? Huh. Now do you want my pivot points? That's a pivot point right there. I knew that on the first of the month. What is it, the seventh today or sixth? Seventh. I knew that seven days ago, that line. Okay, cool. Now, this might be a big enough um, number that maybe, just maybe, like I've already drawn for you before the news, this can this has the ability to go back up above this. It may not, but we'll find out. Well, it has to do with the spread between the two year and the ten year. So if it, if the interest rate on the ten year dropped from three point two all the way down to 2.8 and then the two year changed very little then the spread between the two uh, has narrowed which means for some reason lots of people are buying the 10 year T note and why would they do that why would you lock yourself in for a longer run well you don't believe interest rates are going to go above three percent so you're locking in 3%. You see what I mean? But. All right, so this is the first first area of interest if you're going to rebuy and try to be a, a bull again. Once again, I did this before the news, and I did it after the news, and then I drew these lines. These might be areas where people buy it back. Was it good get numbers as well? Cool. I was super happy about that. Our cats, <laughs> who would not want your pivot points? Well, apparently only four or five people wanted the pivot points, so I'm not sure how many besides them have downloaded it. Okay. So remember, plan A is here and plan B is here for, for bulls. Let's see if I can squeeze this in there. It's too far away. I guess we could do it on a five-minute, but that's too slow for us, right? What kind of grandma uses a five-minute chart? Anyways. Maddie says, is it not possible? Well, it, what you can do instead of asking me, because you don't want to be dependent on me, do your own research. So here's, right, you can go to December 19th. I have a final examination in real estate development this day. 
All right. What does this say? 75% chance the Fed's going to raise interest rates. Actually, it's not true. 75% of the professional bank-to-bank -bank market have priced in a rate hike on um, December 19th. So 75% chance they're going to do it. Pivot trading, I actually, no, the style that I use is swing trading. The technical indicator are pivot points. Okay. I love swing trading, but I also like spot trading, scalping, and carrying. So um, I love I'm a I'm a lover for sure. Oh look, it's going up again. This is the moment of truth. If it can't get back above here, Ishkaputya. You got it? If we can't get above this line in the sand, Ishkaputya. Has anyone re read my article on FX Street called uh how to, what is it? How to predict and trade the employment situation report? So you would know what that meant if you did when I say it looks like it's not going to break the line in the sand. Let's take a look at the USD CAD. I drew this one for you. Oh. Not much of a pullback. It's even more aggressive. Okay. Uh, oil's doing really nice. Very nice. Okay. Remember the trade plan on oil two weeks ago from this period here. I've already explained this, but I got to do it again. The trade plan is $50.09 to $65.90. Two weeks ago, that was the plan. Oh, thank you, FX Street moderator. How to prepare for and trade the employment situation report. How loufle. Thank you very much, moderator. So I wrote that many years ago, guys, and explained specifically what I'm talking about. How to, how to analyze all the economic data to predict the headline number. Two ways to trade it. And then I think a counter, uh, the uh, volatility trade, the counter trend trade. Chuck says, so OPEC deal, oil up. Good cat employment numbers. Yeah, yeah, might be, well, yeah. But how, how long have I been waiting for that combination? Um, I've been waiting for USD CAD to fall for, oh my gosh, close to two months, I imagine, huh? So all I can say is finally, and look at my trade plan from Wednesday, guys. Can you see it? Moderator, can you put the link into the uh, download too? HTTP colon slash slash charts dot FX bootcamp dot com. Or you, maybe you could even just allow one of this going. people can have these same pivot points that I have. Can you buy oil 
now. Well, why would you want to buy it now? But if you want to be reactionary, what would you do? Well, you, uh, you can't buy it here. I know it's like a weird question. Thank you, moderator. Let me just double check the it works. And that takes you here. There you go. Oh my god. Wait. There you go. That's it. That's weird. It looks different. A tablet form. How weird. Oh, uh, Michael, just, uh, it's the, I just closed the window and then I saw your thing. It's the FedWatch tool at the CME group. So just go to Google and type in FedWatch tool, brings it right up. I believe it's in my report on how to trade the non-employment uh, situation report. I think I specifically mention it. Although I believe FX Street changed some of the links to make them internal. Um, but either way, it might be there. Yeah, no, it's gone. Uh, it's the Fed Watch tool. Fed Watch tool. Roger, you caught oil yesterday? That's the way to do it, right, Roger? I find it hard to answer a question where I plan something out for two weeks, then it happens, and then someone says, well, how do I enter it now? I'm like, well, why would you want to enter it now after it's happened? So it's sort of a weird question. Um, but anyways, Roger, I'm glad you caught it. Ibrahim, the link is above you. Charts at fxbootcamp.com. So anyways, how would you do this? I guess I'm going to, I'm going to change the template here. Uh, let's do this. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, oil. I'd buy it around 53, I suppose, if I had to. I'm not sure if you're going to get it now because it's a fundamental move, not a technical move. But let's say something like this would be interesting if you had to try again if you missed it. Okay, but bear in mind, guys, where the money is made is setting up the trade two weeks ago. And talking about it logically, intelligently, and all that kind of stuff. And now that it's up here, you're, you want to do it now, uh, probably you're not going to get a chance today. It, it, it's just too late, man. Two, you had two weeks to set this up. So maybe on Monday or Tuesday, you get a play down here. Okay. Okay. Uh, what if you're a bear? Is anyone still a bear on oil? Does anyone actually want to short oil? In that case, it's a you're in a great position now. Okay? We see the consolidation here and here. We have a top, we have a top, we have a top, we have a top. And that's next week's M3, which puts a bear short here, and their target is here, which is basically just back down to the bottom. And then Wes wants to buy it back here. Yeah, which might be a very interesting play, Wes. I think you might be right on that one.
Uh, well, Henry, we already did that like twice, if not five times. Okay. You guys remember? We had this set up as plan A. We had this set up as plan B, right? That's what these gray zones are. If I back out, you can see plan A is bounce off this. Plan B is bounce off this. So now I got to click in a couple. So now, now that you know what those mean, you know what? And let me get rid of this big top. Let me get rid of this big top. I already made my point with this, and it already worked. All right, great. Let's delete it. Oops. Okay. Let's click back in. Okay. Go back. This was A. This was B. So the cool thing is, if you went long in here on plan B, your stop is still here, and you're risking hardly anything. And all you're saying is, look, if this is going to go up, if this is a, if this is good news big time, the Fed's really going to cut two interest rate hikes out of next year's plan and oil is starting to go up with and the jobs, you know, whatever, right? Then maybe that, maybe that's up here. And if not, nah, then you tried and you didn't lose much. The, the thing about high volatility event driven strategies is you're not supposed to risk a whole lot. You're not supposed to lose a lot of money on such a dog and pony show type trading strategy. Can you sell gold? Well, we can look at it. Now, why would you want to sell something rising? So the only thing you could do here to sell. Okay. First of all, do you have resistance? Uh, barely, but you could count it that way. Then between now and Monday, you might have an opportunity to sell and you would get to this target. Okay. So what you should be doing now on small time frames, remember talking about scalping about an hour ago, I said, I like to scalp and I'll, in fact, I'll scalp into my swing trades, stuff that I'll be in for a week or a month or multiple months. You still need to scalp. But if you get a if you get a scalp set up in there to the south side, you could you could enter it like a scalp, but you might say, you know what, you're a bear on gold for whatever fundamental reason. So what that means is if you sell it up at that level, this is your conservative target, and that seems to make sense. And this is your aggressive target. Okay. But be forewarned. Swing traders on the uh, 28th of November, 29th of November, and 30th of November, we're buying gold at this level. And if they're still in control, they're not done yet. Their minimum target was 12.51. Okay, so you might be right here, and you might be at okay resistance, but don't be shocked if we're up here first and then then we come down. So don't be stubborn about it is all I'm saying. Okay. Ask yourself, what were these guys thinking when they entered the trade? And these guys were thinking this. So let them have it. 
they'll take profit and that'll be the weakness for you to start selling. You don't want to sell into their buying. You, you see what I mean? Does that make sense? If you guys don't know how to swing trade, feel free to visit fxbootcamp.com and take the swing trading course. You, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you need, you need to know. You need to know how pivot points. You need to know price action. Like, let me show you the most important things. Like, a lot of this stuff on this chart I can get rid of. Here's everything you need to succeed. Okay. What do you see? There's only two things on this chart. Price, you see there's no moving averages, there's no oscillators. There's price action and there's pivot points. Now, one set is monthly pivot points, the other set is weekly pivot points. In case you don't know, this is a bearish sell zone, this is the target. This is a bullish buy zone. This is the target. They're pretty good. By target, I mean this is the projected low for the week. This was the projected high for the week. So this was this week. This was last week. Okay, the week before was an inside week. Okay, so the only thing on this chart, guys, is price, action, and market forces. Okay, pivot points. It's the only indicator, and it's a leading indicator. The other thing on here, just candlesticks, right? So that I use price action, which is the just trading of candlesticks. Oops. And they're also a leading indicator. And... I believe these two things, perhaps because they're leading indicators, there's not many of them, but because they're leading indicators, I believe you have to master both these things. Price action. You need to know how to trade price action. If you don't know how to, I, I just can't fathom how you can trade without price action. And then pivot points, like you need to know your targets, right? Like on Monday, in fact, I know the top and bottom um, for next week. It's interesting, right? I know the top and bottom of the market, the presumed, the assumed top and market, uh, top and bottom of the market next week. So how could you possibly trade if you didn't know that? Okay. So like I was saying earlier on gold, if you happen to be a bear now, which is fine. And then because of this price, because of a pivot, if it reversed, I'm not saying the pivot tells you it's going to reverse, but it, if you use price action, which I'm doing here, showing you that this level was respected, then you will take a shot to the south side and this will be your target. Why? Once again, pivot points. Your leading indicator is projecting next week's bottom and next week's resistance. It's not telling you to be a bear. None of this tells you to be a bull or a bear. That's fundamental analysis. But if you want to be a bear on gold, if gold turns at this price, not this one, not this one, not this one, then this is your target. And if it doesn't, don't worry about it. Ignore it. Come back Tuesday or Wednesday and see what happens. Okay. And everything else that I use or you use or some other guru uses is fine too, but they're just Layers of onion on top of the onion. I mean, that's core trading here. Price action, pivot points, two leading indicators. Other things are helpful. They they help you measure, you know, overbought and oversold conditions and all of these different things. And the divergence confirms this other thing. All, the, all that is really nice. But you, you don't actually need to have it. But if you don't know how to swing trade... <laughs> Good luck, brother. Good luck. 
Good luck. So, for example, like this, this swing trade here that I did on Tuesday or Wednesday, I think it was. I guess it's Wednesday. That's just a swing trade. This one here on Monday, that's just a swing trade. So if you don't know how to swing trade, you're not going to catch these moves. You're like, really? That's so sad. Okay? That's really sad. You're probably very depressed about that. Yes. Yes, Michael. They're derived from floor traders uh, in the trading pits. So they've been, pivot points have been used uh, for a very long time. You know, I don't know, 50 or 60 years. Right, Adam? Uh, amazingly blow you away. Like, for example, USD CAD, this was the projected top two weeks ago. This was the projected top one week ago. This is the projected top this week. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is these are exit points, not entry points. So what is the entry point? Well, actually, this is the buy zone for anyone thinking that USD CAD is going up on Monday. This is your buy zone. You actually already knew that on Monday. Therefore, it sets. It says up here is going to be your target. You knew that on Monday, that 133.30 or whatever that is, was the target. You knew back here, brother. So anyway, so you hit your target. It only took you a day and a half, and you were done the rest of the week. And you decided. Because it didn't make a lower low, you're still a bull. So on Monday, look, it's the same place. So you're like, oh, well, I'm a bull, so I'm going to buy here. Okay, this is my conservative target. This is my aggressive target. Okay, I'm sorry, you missed it by two pips. Right? I'm so sorry, my eyes are tearing up. Now, on a monthly basis, you say, well, Wayne, that's great on a weekly basis. But what about a monthly basis? All right, so this is the first day of the month of December. And it says, if you're a bull, well, you, you were a bull here and you were a bull here. So anyways, it says, if you're a bull for the entire month of December, you should buy it at this price, 131.67. And if you buy it there, this is your target. Oh, snap. Well, we did that, too. So it works on a monthly basis, works on a weekly basis. How accurate is it? Well, three pips here, two pips here, not even, not. I mean, perfectly to the pip. Perfectly to the pip. Perfectly to the pip. This Within two pips. Okay. So, yeah, give or take a couple of pips. That's how accurate. Cool, right? But besides that, ignore it. <laughs> Look, if you don't want to know, don't know. I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been using pivots longer than, if you're using some other broker, I've been using pivot points probably 10 years longer than your brokers even had pivot points. I used to go to trading conferences and teach people pivot point trading. And you basically had to calculate these yourself because your, your broker didn't carry the pivot points. But anyways, enough about me. So that's your gold. Let, let me go back to the... Okay, great. Um, so we're just kind of farting around now. Let's go around the world. Let's look at the yens. Stock market's going to open in a half an hour.
I shaved the wizard beard off, huh? Okay, take a look. Amazing, right? So going back, bears and cad yen. On the first day of the month, this was the bear selling zone. And way back here on the first day of the month, if you were a bear selling the December swing, your target was here. I am not joking. Now you can see here, I was actually hoping for oil to, uh, oil to go up. So therefore I wanted CAD to go up. Cause remember I was showing you my bias for oil was up two weeks ago. So I was hoping to catch an up here and it, that didn't happen. Okay. But this is for bears and I happen to be a bull. So I wasn't looking the right way. But if you were a bear on oil, that was your sell zone, right? That's in the swing trading course. It's in the book. It's everywhere. If you're a bear, that's your sell zone. And if you're selling up there, this is your target. And you knew this seven days ago. Okay. Does anyone want to sell this? You have permission. If you think today was all overblown, that an OPEC deal was no good, that the, the uh, NFP is not really going to affect the Fed at all, if you think it's all going to come tumbling down house of cards stuff, on your CAD yen, this is the price. But remember, though, the CAD news was good, too. But nonetheless, if you want to be a bear, this is the price. Okay, I am certainly not telling you you need to be a bear. Okay. Euro, ginormous sideways maybe? Yeah. So I'm looking at this, and, and remember, that was kind of my overview of Euro dollar when I was analyzing it. I'm like, this looks lame, right? This still looks lame to me. So I'm going to remark this up, just triple, quadruple, for, for shizzle, um, mark this up as sideways. Okay. So that's enough of that. There's got to be something better to do. Something better to trade. USD yen, what do you think? Well, the weekly swing trade was sell in this area and target this green area. Remember, the green area is not an entry, it's an exit. This is a, I call it the pivot profit zone. So this is where you get out of trades. This is where you get into trades. And that, we were done uh, Thursday, I guess. So now what? Well, once again, now what is sort of a mediocre question. Um, it's already happened. So now we have to set up next week's trades. Uh, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, do you think this is going to go up or is it going to go down? Are you a bull or are you a bear? And that sets up next week's ideas, right? So if you think this is bullish now, you're going to go this way. But then you're going to say, well, Wayne, the... The reaction was dollar weakness because the Fed is now less likely to raise interest rates three times in 2019. So therefore, uh, that could be positive for macroeconomics. The stock market's probably going to rally today, blah, 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 blah. So dollar should weaken. Yeah, but so should yen in that situation. And therefore, I don't recommend you trade this one at all. <laughs> Beast, another depressing currency, huh? I have it trapped in a range, and it hasn't left that range at all. It's overshot our weekly target, and it's and it's messed up our monthly. So this is another one I'm not interested in right now in the moment. Not interested in this one. Forget it. 
That's how I look at it anyways. I mean, you could trade it probably make money, but you could probably trade it lose money on that one too. It's very uncertain. Let me clean this up. Yeah, this one was crazy. Um, what we were hoping for was this, this, and this. Boy, did that end, huh? Now, this is one of two counter trend trades that I teach. There's only two. This is one of them. It's very disappointing, but it, it happened. <laughs> I guess I wanted it to go up. Um, amazing, though. So uh, I was more correct than I would have liked. Check this out. Last week, this was the bullish buy zone. Based on that buy zone, this was the target for the week. The week before, this was the sell zone. Based on the sell zone, this was the target for the week. Somebody asked me how ac how accurate are pivots. Um, well, cons considering you know these numbers on Monday, on Monday, on Monday, I'd say they're they're pretty amazingly accurate. Um, it's just not set up properly, Michael, and therefore I I have my doubts about it. It means, I think what it's telling us is that other people are staying away from it, and therefore I want to stay away, stay away with it as well. So run is exempt up. Run is happy that they're exempt. Great. All right, so why don't we open up the floor to requests? How can I help you? What currency pair would you like me to cover? Hey, what do you got on your mind? What are you trading? Ah. Uh -huh. What you going to do? What you going to do?
pound yen. Didn't I just do pound yen like four minutes ago? Really? Yeah, pound dollar. Let's do pound dollar. Holy smokes. I swear we just did pound yen. Cat Swiss and stuff, sure. Let me clear this up. All right, well, on a 15 minute chart, this looks terrible. So, yeah, this looks terrible to me. Well, not as bad as the pound yen, but. I mean, look, th th there's setups here, but I don't know if they're good relative to what else is out there. But you might have something like this if you're a bull on this. But do you really want to buy a pound? I don't mind you selling dollar, really, but you really want to buy a pound? So, I mean, that's that, but this is more likely. Kiwi CAD. I don't even know if I have a Kiwi CAD. <clears throat> Kiwi CAD. Do people trade Kiwi CAD? All right. Uh, Kiwi. Oh. Nope, pound cat. There it is, Kiwi Cat. All right. Well, you hit the top of the week on Monday, or sorry, on Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So you were stop. You were supposed to stop buying at the very least here. It's an out of position play. You see this. So what that means is when you're out of position, you trade the four hour twenty one, which worked all week here. Uh, and then you were supposed to stop trading here. So what are you a counter trender now? You taking it back around? If you're doing that, let me drop onto a smaller time frame. Let's go on to maybe even a 15 minute chart. Okay. The way that you should set this up is you set it up like this. Let me see if there's another one in here. And plan A, plan B is kind of in here. Okay. So if you're a bear, you're taking it like that. Sorry. Sorry. Gee whiz. I just saw you guys. Oh man. I apologize. Oh, well, see, I, I'm, I, I, I moved the chat, but even then, see, it's hard because I got chat on a different window and then here. So I moved it here, but I'm so used to not looking at it. So anyways, I apologize. My bad. I apologize. So what I drew was here, 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 and here. And that this is where you were supposed to stop buying this pair. Okay, Kiwi Cat. So if you were a bull, you were supposed to get out on Wednesday. So you shouldn't be in it now. Um, and now if you're a bear, so you're buying Cat and selling Kiwi, um, you got this move. Now you need it to rise. Okay. And sell, this is plan A. And this is plan B. Okay, going back to DWX. Wondered where my cash out point would be. 
Well, see, that's easy. That, that's what technical analysis is, right? So I, let me go back. Let me go back to that. That's super easy. Um, I'll put it back the way we had it. Okay. If you were a bear, you were supposed to stop trading this on Tuesday. Done. Well, you took you Taro. I don't really care about the central pivot point. I don't care. That's not important to me at all. Sometimes it works out, but it's just part of a buy zone or a sell zone. But like, I don't like bite my fingernails over where the central pivot is because it's just, see, put it this way. The central pivot is just important to bulls as it is to bears. So why would I be interested in that? All right, let's do another one. Uh, so KiwiCAD, what was next? Uh, KiwiCAD, I thought I saw another one. Pound dollar did KiwiCAD. All right, I guess I missed it. Uh, CAD yen. See, you guys are so funny, but I guess a lot of people come in late, right? So. I believe I've done CAD yen two or three times. Let's let's go back. We'll do it again. Okay. I'm gonna reset this here. So, yeah, this was the one where I said, look, if you're going to be a bear, this is a great sell. Okay. This whole area here is a sell zone if you're a bear. If you're a bull, there's nothing really you can do right now. Maybe let it drop to... Yeah, 84. Boy, that's 72 pips. 84 and a half, maybe. If you're a bull. So I've already explained this. This is a sell zone. But if you're a bull on this, you can't buy it here. Right? You just can't. So you would need you need the bulls to sell. Either way, bulls are going to arrive. Look at this. This is the projected top for this week. All right, so that's within three pips of accuracy. Yeah, that's pretty good. Notice how it didn't spike up and hit the psych level. It respected the pivot point more than it did 85,000. It didn't touch 85,000. It touched the pivot point and then stopped. Okay. That's correct. It's not central pivot point is not important in terms of buying or selling. Correct. It can be, but in of itself, it's not really the important thing there. It looks like it is, but it's not. Maybe I misunderstood the theory on pivot points. I thought every pivot point was. 
Oh no! Yutaro! Who taught you pivot points? Oh my gosh, Yutaro! That's not right! No! Oh, Yutaro, no! <laughs> no! Not every pivot point level is a potential level of support. No! Gee whiz! That's like saying... Uh, that's like saying, I mean, maybe somebody taught you that. And that, that would be just like a crime against humanity. That's like saying every overbought and oversold stochastic cross is a buy and a sell. And boy, you could probably put together a weekend seminar at, on a Holiday Inn, right? Sell a $1,000 ticket to an amateur and say, this means sell, this means buy, this means sell, this, right? That means buy, this means sell, this means buy, this means sell. And now you should go out and buy a yellow Lamborghini. Get yourself a Yardo, son. Yeah, look how easy it is, right? And they can give you nine reasons why that will work. It's this is overbought, and this is oversold, and this is what the banks trade. These are the bank levels. Come on. You, you're, you're, you're smart enough to know that that's nonsense, right? And the same thing, like, every pivot level is not, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, no. Oh, you like the quick deal tool? Yeah, this is something provided by Trader's Way. If you have a Trader's Way account, they let you see the prices. <laughs> what? So I think I have it here. Let's go in and uh, let me turn on auto trading. Let me drag this in and uh, allow the imports. You ready? This is only available at tradersway.com. Check this out. So now you can click the sell and click the buy. So it's very similar to the one click system, except it lets you see the, the flow of orders here at, at the various prices. You can see the lots coming in. Sometimes there are like one lot, two lots, and all of a sudden 40 lots, 50 lots, 100 lots. And you can see the buying going on. But also you can preset your stop losses and your take profit orders in an OC order fashion. So there's a 2050. Plus, you can see your average, right? And your break even points, your floating profit loss. And you also have a button. So this isn't particularly good if you're scalping. So you can buy, da, 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 buy, da, 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 right, right? And then when you're ready to close, close all. And it closes all the positions all at once. So what you do is, Right. So in this case, this is more bearish, right? So you could sell down, down, sell down, da, 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 sell, da, da, da. And, let, and then when you get to your target, let's say this is your target, you can just hit close all, closes all three trades. Boom, boom, boom. Nothing in the market and done. All with automatic stop losses and take profit orders, otherwise known as an OCO. Isn't that sweet? So anyways, I want to go back to uh, Utaro. Go to fxbootcamp.com, take the swing trading course. It's probably, I don't know, 12 hours of videos. And no, not every level is a potential level of support and resistance. No. Some have meaning. Some have supreme meaning. Some have supreme meanings on particular days of the week. An M1 on Monday ain't an M1 on Friday. Okay. So you, you got, you got to, uh, you, 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 yeah, you, you need it. I'm telling you, brother, you need it. fxbootcamp.com. Thorgo, right? You got, it costs money, by the way. What can I say?
costs money. You should have money. This is 4x, right? You should have some money. All right. Right on, Pre. It's awesome, Torgo. Right on, Henry. I'm happy to share. Now pay it back, Henry. Like Torgo, uh, please visit tradersway.com and open an account just to show your your you know pay it back. Just out of respect and loyalty, I'd appreciate that. It's not on the menu bar, Jim. You got to go to tradersway.com and do a search for the uh, quick tool. Is that what it's called? Quick tool? Quick deal. Do a search for quick deal. And there's a download link where you can download and install this. Okay. And it goes into your scripts folder, not your experts folder. Okay. It's not an indicator. It's not an EA. Tradersway.com. Yeah, right on, Utaro. Yeah. No, you're going to love it, man. And by the way, I do a swing trading group for people that have finished the swing trading course. And in the spring, we're starting the new group because uh, we're just wrapping up the fall group. In the spring one, we're including a performance coach to sit down with you once a month and find out your strengths, find out your weaknesses, and fix you, keep you focused, keep you on track, um, force you to be successful. You will... You will become successful or you will die or you'll quit. Okay. So wait till that comes out. Um, re registration starts in basically now, but we'll, we'll talk about that in January, I guess. Okay, cool. Uh, any more technical analysis, please? What 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 charts would you like me to cover for you? Let Uncle Wayne help. What's going on? Our cats, yeah. You know, so anyone doing the course, uh, remember then you're going to be ready for the January deal. Um, the way that it works now is you can sign up for the January group. It's called Swing Trading Group with Performance Coaching, I think. Something like that. You sign up, that includes the course, and it includes the 25 weeks of Swing Trading Live. And it includes performance coaching, one-on-one -on -one stuff, you and a coach reviewing your, your stats, your numbers, and all that kind of stuff. So um, do that, and you can start your performance coaching and doing the videos right away. Cool. All right. Uh, USD czar. I don't want to do that, Roger. I'm sorry. Aussie Kiwi Pound CAD. Um, all right. Well, let's do Aussie Kiwi, I guess. Um, yeah, so, so these are all, it's funny. These are all things I don't cover or, or trade, right? So, um, Aussie Kiwi, Aussie Kiwi, uh, all right. 
Okay. See what I'm missing? What am I missing? This doesn't tell me the top and bottom of the market. Ah, feels so much nicer. Okay, cool. So this opened out of position. It's incredibly bearish. And in fact, it's a bit too bearish. If it reverses where it is now, which is here, I prefer it to reverse here. So let's just give it one more Yahoo. But this is close enough, really. So if it reverses down here in the next four days, then by the end of the month, we'll touch that central pivot. Maybe even the end of the week, as you can see, um, this is a, a, a plausible trade for next week. Okay, that'd be a heck of a big week. That'd be from probably from Friday to Friday. So it would probably look more like this. Um, let's say this ends up being the bottom, then we get this, then we get this, and then we get this, and we get this, and then 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 we're here on Friday. Friday of next week. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Not that this is supposed to be bullish, um, but another way of looking at it is once it's down here, you're supposed to stop selling. You see what I mean? This is the projected bottom for the month of December. And so if it reverses here, good enough. If it comes down here, consolidates, and then goes up, once again, it's more of a counter trend trade than anything. Oh, I use uh, Snagit. No, no, this ain't Snagit. Uh, Camtasia Studio. CAD Swissy, okay. Once again, I don't think, I, uh, you know, I'll just keep moving this. Uh, let's change this out. La, 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 la. Where was it? CAD Swissy? Pound Swissy. CAD Swissy. Camtasia Studio. It's like the third most popular video editing software in the world. Uh, I don't have the chat in front of me. Let's see. Hang on. Let me get the chat so I can type into the chat for you. There we go. Camtasia Studio. It's probably, I don't know, 300 bucks or something. Not a big deal. All right, so somebody wants to know about CAD Swissy. Well, let's take a look. Bears were supposed to sell here. And for those that sold there, their targets were here. So whoever sold here, they were expecting this by the end of the month. So you have to ask yourself, is that close enough? And maybe. But before you start drinking the bullish Kool-Aid here, this is resistance. So there's a more than reasonable chance that whoever was expecting to hit that line still expects to hit that line. And they're going to do this. Okay? So something I would expect would happen soon. But a for the bulls, they're going to say close enough. They're going to do something more like this. Okay. And what messes it up is that this target here and the actual bottom here, they're so close that they're kind of, right? Kind of the same. Close enough. They're about right. Right? I, I, I don't know. You have to make that decision. 
So it, you'd be a fool to buy it now at resistance. I mean a fool. But you wouldn't be a fool to sell it at resistance, especially if you sold it here or even here, right? Does that make sense, guys? I don't know if you're a bull or a bear, but if you're a bear, you need to sit up and take notice. If you're a bull and you bought down here, you better move your stop. Okay. And if you're like, well, which one, Wayne? Well, I don't know that, but that comes down to your bias. Now, with your bias set, it's clear as day what to do. You're preparing to dump this right here, right now, if you're a bear. And if you're not bear, you're moving your stop to break even. So either way, you should be doing something. But you certainly cannot buy it here. What kind of idiot buys it at resistance? Well, probably a broke idiot, right? If you're a bull, your target is actually here. So you bought it at 84, is that right? 74. You bought it at 74 and your target is 77, more like really 76 and a half. Let's say 76.5, okay? And that's pretty typical for uh, a weekly swing trade. And that's all that is, is a weekly swing trade. What do you mean predicting indicator for bulls and bears? That's what pivot points are. If you're a bear, you were supposed to sell here and this was your target. Now, you didn't get it, but you knew exactly where to sell. That's the nice thing. And if you were a bear the week before, this is where you sell. And this was your target. Well, this was a crazy week, and that was way off. All right. But nothing tell – the way to be a bull or a bear is you do the fundamentals. You, you go to the Swiss National Bank and read all about the Swissy, and then you go to the Bank of Canada and you read all about the CAD. And they'll tell you right there what to do. Um, but if you can't do that, then you simply do technical analysis long term. Okay. So, for example, should you sell here if you're a bear? No. Once again, you'd be so foolish. Clearly, you have no idea what's going on. But look how awesome this bearishness was. Oh, my gosh. Off the roll reversal, right? In this area, oh, my gosh. Great trade. So that was a great trade here. And what was the target for that trade? This circle here. That's why it's a terrible place to sell because everyone that sold here is getting out. So do you think they're going to try again if they took profit here? Heck yeah, why not? This is where they're going to sell it, right? They sold it here, took profit, it rose. Now they're going to sell it again. That's the idea. Will they actually do that? I have no idea. I really don't. I don't. Uh, so the flip side of this is if you're a bull, you're like, well, there's plan A. And if I can get this up to here, then plan B is to buy it there. Does that make sense? But it doesn't tell you which one. You need to decide that way ahead of time. Like, you don't do this every day or every week. or I mean, once or twice a year, you should be updating your fundamentals. No, you, no relative to the strength and stuff. I mean, that's what these things are for, right? So you pull up a scan. Let's look at yen. Yen's an easy one, usually. Oh, hang on. My drawing tool is on. I think it killed it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's do it again. All right. So eh, let's go to a smaller time frame. You want to know about relative strength on a small time frame. All right. OK. 
Okay. Yen is weakened against the Aussie. Yen is weakened against the Kiwi. Yen is weakened versus the Euro. Yen is weakened versus the CAD. Is the Yen weak now or strong, Michael? Then the next question is, if the yen is weak, which one of these pairs has moved the most and which one's moved the least? So I'd say CAD is strongest. CAD number one. Uh, I'd say Euro looks maybe number two. This uh, Aussie looks like number three. And Kiwi looks like the number four. I just rank them in, by strength. Okay. Which also tells me CAD Kiwi is probably moving. Right? Uh, or is it Kiwi CAD? CAD Kiwi or Kiwi CAD? Kiwi dollar, Kiwi yen. Kiwi CAD. So this should be falling. Oh, snap. And it's falling good. That's how you do relative strength. Falling way more than all the end pairs. How did I know that? I did relative strength. CAD was strong versus the yen. Kiwi was neutral versus the yen. Therefore, CAD, Kiwi would be moving even more than yen. So anyways, nice, right? That's called relative strength. And by the way, here's the projected top to the week. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, Michael, sure, absolutely. What do you think? Isn't it nice? Isn't it helpful to know that this is probably going to be where bulls get out of the market? That's helpful, right? So this is a situation where it opened out of position, so you have to use the four hour. But check this out, guys. Look how bullish it was for so long, and suddenly it turned bearish, okay? So remember, this is actually a perfect buy zone, okay? By definition, this is a buy zone. The target is here, and you see how it went up to the target? It was there by Wednesday, and by Friday we had done almost nothing. So it went from here to here in three days, and then it did nothing for three days. And then it took off again, and what did it do? Once again, took off on Monday, hit the target on Wednesday, and stopped, just like it did the week before. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, pivot points. Okay. Once again, all these indicators you can download right totally from for free. Charts.fxbootcamp.com. You can have this compliments of the firm. Just make sure you pay it back by opening an account to Trader's Way. And look at it collapse now. Michael, because in this situation, Typically in a market, you get a bullish move, some profit taking, bullish move, some profit taking, bullish move. But what about bullish move, bullish move? What do you do in that situation when you didn't get the retracement here or here that you would normally expect? Well, you can't, you can't do this like Fibonacci type play anymore, right? Like you would have... You would have fibbed this, let's say, and then you would have fibbed this, 
But now what do you do if there's no retracement? You, re you revert to buying it off the four hour 21. Again, it's just, it's just something you do as a swing trader. You should recognize that on Monday. So Monday, you should look at this and say, oh, well, we're out of position. And in fact, let's say you're here on Monday morning on a 15 minute chart. So I have to go all the way back here, okay? The market opens here and you say, ooh, I'm a bull. So there's two things that could happen here. Bears just take this downtown on you and you get you don't even get an entry. Actually, you want it to come down so you can buy it down here, okay? But it didn't happen. So what do you do when it's like uh, London open on Monday and it goes up and not down? What do you do in that situation? You flip over to the four hour and your new buy zone is off the 21. So now you're doing things like, so here's Monday and it went up. So then on Tuesday, you're kind of buying this dip. Wednesday, you're kind of buying this. Thursday, double top. This is the big, big thing. And by the way, it's just funny, out of coincidence, I think it was Monday or Tuesday with uh, Trader's Way clients uh, in the webinar I was doing. We were talking about how 100% retracement was a warning sign for a potential lower high. It wasn't this pair, it was a different pair, but oh boy, is that a great example. Once again, technical analysis. I am not using any weird proprietary software and all this kind of stuff. It's not a new cool trading system. Uh, I've been doing this at these webinars using these techniques for 13 years at FX Street. I've been doing webinars at FX Street for 13 years, and my charts have not changed. Yeah, you some charts.fxbootcamp.com. I still can I tried to cheat YouTube and put the link in there, but it I'm blocked. I'm not allowed to add the link. So there you go. So someone else can type it in charts.fxbootcamp.com. Thank you, moderator. Mucho gracias. Isn't that neat? Yeah, you need this, man. You need this. All right. And thank you, moderator, for being on the job. I think most moderators are just sleeping. They're like, oh, is it over yet? Is, can I go home? We have the world's greatest moderator. We always have. Thank you very much for everything you do. Yeah, thank you, moderator. All right, uh, next, another request. Let's go. Let's do some more. Let's do some more setups. Best moderator in the whole world. So we're back up. Plan B still working, guys, on the uh, Euro dollar. By the way, that was pretty killer for me to put that red line in the sand, wasn't it? Come on, that was killer, right? It's going up. It's green, 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 green. I'm like, I'm putting my red line there. This is where it's going to stop. That's pretty killer, right? And then remember, plan A and plan B. Plan B is still working. But it needs to make the higher high, and it's taking way too long. But nonetheless, it's working out. And what about this one? Did we ever get the pullback? 
Yeah, moderately. But I was hoping for a pullback and drop. All it did was kick off the pivot. What? Once again, the pivot point was the key here. Didn't even pull back. It just came down to the pivot. Amazing. The cool thing about this is I've been waiting for like a month for this move. So uh, I hope it sticks. But look at that on Wednesday, right? You can see the arrow I drew on Wednesday. So that's pretty nice too. Kill up. <clears throat> no, uh, no, not do Come on, guys, any other currency pairs? If not, I have a financial accounting final to uh, to study for. Harvard Business School, guys. Harvard Business School, financial accounting. And I got my final exam on Tuesday. Oh, I'm also in the middle of a big real estate development project. Oh, but that's a management school class. Oh. Turkish Lira. I don't want to do Turkish Lira. I'll, it's this is too it's not the right thing it's too uh it's too speculative it's i don't want to teach that yeah but you flew below the deck edward doesn't count Yeah, well, let's just say I don't want to be a CFA. So I, I did this homework, this uh, financial accounting homework just the other day, and I was really upset about it. And I told my wife about it, like, work really hard. I'm like, this is a dumb question, right? So anyway, so they, they gave me two years of cash flow statements uh, and, and balance sheet and income, um, balance sheet and income statement. And they're like, do you perform a cash flow statement. So I'm looking at these two years of financial data. I'm like, these are the two worst examples of what, like, there's no way this would be right, right? This is, this is the, the data they gave me. I'm like, there's no way this is, would be right. And I had to go back, like, did I make a mistake? Did I download the wrong stuff? And I'm like, no, this is right. I'm looking at their two years of stuff. And I'm like, that, that's just, there's no way this would happen in the real world, right? So anyways, so I start doing the numbers and then it gets down to a question where they're like, hey, they're going to make a $40,000 investment and there's an 8% discount rate. You know, what's the break even point? So I look at them like, well, you know, it's got to be about 12 years because there's $3,300 in cash flow uh, annually. So, you know, 12 point something years, 12.1, 12.2. And I'm like, but there's an 8% discount here. So they're going to want me to discount this using um, future values, which I thought made sense. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So I do it, and I'm like, dude, it's going to, because their discount rate's so high, it's going to take them like 42 years or something to pay this stuff off. So I'm like, well, that's a really dumb investment, right? But I'm like, but they gave me the discount rate, so I must, so I, I busted all out and I discounted them out and I had to go 42 years out there and I put in the answer 40 or not 40. Yeah. 42 and a half years. It turns out my answer. So I, then I get the answer in the, um, then they asked me the internal rate of return, which I got correct. And this other question I got right. And then of course in my 42 and a half years, I got that wrong. So I asked my, like my, um, my teaching fellow, I'm like, why would you give me a discount rate if you just wanted me to do like a non, because it was 12.2. Like, but why'd you give me a discount rate if you're not going to discount it? And who would, you know, and like, well, on a, on a, on a break, even analysis, you don't discount it. You just do just present value of the cash flows. 
I'm like, well, I hope you can see that when I do it my way, you get a better reality and it's clear that this investment is stupid and no company would do it. And she's like, well, that's debatable. And then I'm like, look, I got the internal rate of return. And I got that one right. And it's less than a discount rate, which is another way of telling you, don't do the deal. So like, I'm like, this is a dumb question. I've told her, this is dumb. What a dumb question. Harvard Business School, this is dumb. <laughs> like it just, there's no way these numbers make sense. There's, your example sucks and, and, the, and the, the case study sucks. Like this company is retarded. There's no way it's in business. So anyways, that's where I am. That's, <laughs> and she's like, well, so anyway, so I don't know. I'd probably make a good businessman, uh, but I'd make a crappy accountant because I think accountant would just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Don't think about it. Don't worry about what it means. <laughs> right. Don't just, just crack it up. Just crank it out, man. So anyways, yeah, Aussie dollar, thank you. I'm happy to do Aussie dollar for you. La, la, la. So anyways, yeah, why don't you turn 45 and, and, and go to graduate school? What a fun thing, huh? All right, if you are a bull, this is what you've been praying for um, all month. Okay. And if you are a bull, you are now very, very seriously into something like this. Okay. If you're a bear, uh, you're in trouble. Okay. Um, if you're a bear, I would sell it... Um, here or here. So we'll call this bearish plan A, bearish plan B. Plan B probably looks more likely, and uh, I would do this. Plan A is uh, for bulls and bulls, and these are all bullish entries now. Okay. Well, it's nice. My teaching professor calls me Mr. McDonald. <laughs> I'm like, damn right. I know what the internal rate of return means. If the IRR is lower than the DSCR, then forget it. Don't do the project. Or if you're going to do it, do the deal with Iran and then try to hide it. It's my way of the who I way. Jim, we could do a, or Joe, Joe, we could do a quickie swing trade. Is that right? Edward, still up two thousand. Are you up one thousand on each or two thousand each? Is it total four thousand or a total of two thousand? Oh, right on, Edward. Appreciate that. We should get a smoke a cigar and laugh about the laugh about it. Say. These are good pips. Yeah, that's really good, Edward. So I don't know who's left. Is there anyone else that's ever been up a thousand pips because of uh, help I've given them? Has anyone else been up a thousand pips or more? Then you could say, oh, Wayne really helped me on this one. I don't, I don't know if anyone's even in the room anymore. There's probably only 10 people. I can't tell. NP caught it. Very nice. 
Yeah, that's really good. I love it when people are successful. Yeah, we could do a quickie there, just uh, record something quick. Henley, you've been up a thousand pips. That's really cool. Oh, is that right? Cool. So remember, guys, you can work with me every single day just like this. I do a one hour, hour and a half webinar, just exactly like you see here. We do it every day. Uh, so open an account at uh, tradersway.com. Huh? That's cool, Michael. Right on. I appreciate that. Well, I know quite a few people have, but they're mostly swing traders. Uh, any other uh, currency pairs you would like me to cover? I'm happy to. Getting pretty late in the webinar. Oh, all of them. Yeah, a thousand pips is not that big of a deal. Uh, right. No other requests then? Then I propose maybe we end 30 minutes early if we've covered everything. Right on, Hanley. I know you're very loyal. Well, that's all I've been doing all day, Michael. Everything you've seen from me is I'm setting you up on swing trades. Okay. All right. This is the bullish buy zone for the month of December. And based on that, this is the projected high for December. So if you were a bull on EuroCAD, you should have taken profit about four days ago and taken the rest of the month off. If you want to try to buy it back, you have permission to look for reversal patterns now. So if you're a bull after this drop and you get sort of something like this, you have permission to start getting in. Uh, but it'd be around here. So you might have to wait till Monday. Right on. Very cool. I hope you guys notice the potential for swing trading. I must have said it 20 times now. We've gone through things. And there have been very, very, very clear setups for swing traders this month. Uh, Michael, you should probably try the FX Street YouTube channel. Remember, there's only 13 years of these monthly webinars.
Here, let me see if I can do something. Uh, hopefully I don't mess this up. Oh, hang on. Let me try something. I know you've lost uh, media source. No. Uh, create a new one. Local file, browse. Let me see if I can find something for you. I, I don't know if I deleted it or not. Videos. No. Um, well, probably a download. Oops. Check this out. You ready? Can you see this? I can't hear it though. Can you see this and hear this guys? Anyways, so you can see a couple of things. Well, how about this? Just for one thing, that even though that's 2006, so that was more than 12 years ago, um, my trading style and technique has not changed one iota. What does that tell you? Would you like to learn how to trade the way I've been trading day in and day out every single day for the last 15 years? Or would you like to learn something new I just figured out over the, or over the last month? I did some back testing and came up with a new, it's a new awesome trading system. And it's got a really funny name. It's really funny name. So you should learn it with me. This is just trading, guys. I'm just trying to teach you common sense. I'm self-taught. I don't know what anybody else does. I don't know what people do. I don't care what people do. Um, maybe they're smarter than me, and maybe they do things that are more complicated. But uh, with my fragile, childlike mind, I've just figured out 
uh, common sense way of trading. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's about being broke. It's just, you know, it's, it's just, it's common sense. Um, I don't trade because the MACD tells me I don't trade because of a moving average crossover or, or I don't trade because I see, um, you know, a, a, a five legged dog reversal pattern. Um, I buy at support and I sell at resistance. And what's important is that I've done analysis of the market and I know whether I'm a bull or a bear fundamentally, um, for many, many months in a row. So I wake up in the morning and I know if I want to buy something or sell something, I just don't know if I'm going to get a good price. So if I'm a buyer of something, like let's say I'm a buyer of EuroCAD, that's a good price for me to consider buying it. Doesn't mean I will, it's the right price I can consider. So I'll consider it. And then tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll say, am I still a bull? You know, is there, what, what is the next price? Okay. Now, if it goes lower than that, I'm going to have to think it's going to come all the way down to here. So I'll, I'll say, you know, for me, it's not ideal. I didn't make it happen, but this would be plan A and way down here would be plan B. But at least now I'm in control. I know what I'm trying to do. And then once I enter at the right prices, I, I protect my risk and then manage my risk. It's just common sense. It matters if, I, uh, if I'm a bull, I'm looking to buy its support. So I think it begs the question, what's the next two levels of support? And I'll say, well, that's about a 50% off of a roll reversal. So if that doesn't work, really, then I have to treat this as plausible reversal. So therefore, the next buy zone would be here. But you know what? That sets up a head and shoulders, right? So we'll see. This matters. This matters. Okay. Pips matter. This matters. And if that doesn't work, then maybe Wednesday next week, we'll look at down here and see if that works. You see how much simplified that is? I'm not going to the charts going, what's happening now? What should I be doing? Is it bullish now? Oh my God, did you see that? Does that mean I'm bullish now? What does this mean, right? I don't do anything like that. I know what I do. I open my charts. Am I at support? Should I buy it here? I'll buy it here. It's the right price, but now I need a reversal pattern. Oh, look, a double bottom with a higher high. I guess I'll buy the next dip. Just simple tactical technical analysis but I've already got the strategy in place. So I either buy here or I don't buy here. And if I don't buy here, well, it might take two or three days to get down here and then I'll see what happens here. Am I gonna get a reversal pattern here and create a double bottom? Does that set up an inverse head and shoulders? Right, can you imagine next week, guys? Let's uh, back this out even further. Let's go out to a one hour. Uh, Four hour. Uh, I don't need, so it wouldn't even be a head and shoulders, I don't think. Okay. Can you see? If I'm a bull, I have a legitimate reason to maybe buy here. That's all I'm doing. Common sense. I if I say this was a bottom, this was a top, right? Top, bottom, and then this must be a higher high, right? So if that is correct, if I judge this properly to be a higher high, then yes, I can extend this out now. And somewhere around here, I can consider that a roll reversal, higher low scenario. That's the trade plan. So if I bought it now, and then it dropped down here and knocked me out, I can take a break. Namaste. So thank you, Trader's Way. Please join us at Trader's Way.
Thank you, Trader's Way clients. I hope you guys become Trader's Way clients so I can work with you every day, day after day, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I can be there with you for 90 minutes a day going through these types of plans. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I will teach you technical and fundamental analysis and we'll address this stuff too because um, it's all part of being a trader. So um, if you are not yet part of the Traders Way family, please visit tradersway.com. Open an account today. Thank you to FX Street for hosting us for the 152nd month of Trade Non-Farm Payrolls Live. If you'd like my charts, my templates, my files, my profiles, my indicators, visit charts fxbootcamp.com and by the way if you're thinking about taking one of the training courses there are offers in the download link to save you mucho dinero you're welcome so charts.fxbootcamp.com so peace on earth May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average. Have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, I think I'm going to fire up some whiskey and uh, fire up some swing trading music and uh, hang out with my swing trading group. Do some trading over there now. Very cool, right? So you might want to visit fxbootcamp.com and join the swing trading group. Remember, it now includes performance coaching. There's also a day trading um, course in there now, too. So, so that, I think that's it. I think we're good. Thank you, moderator. Yep. Have a wonderful weekend. Cheers.